And I looked down at him, and he was cursing and raising, expressing his frustration about how things weren't working too well. And his glamorous date was stuck in asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Good afternoon, Mr. Sinatra. <laughs> oh Nothing worked. It was a challenge for Walt. It was amazing how fast he turned it around. <laughs> I want to ask, what is your favorite Walt story? Well, I got hell from him four times. <laughs> I got, and, and, and somehow in life, I think we remember, not so much when we got the little praise, but we remember when we get help. <laughs> the first time was early in the park uh, after Disney had opened. I kept telling him, you're losing, you're, you're wasting an opportunity to make money. You're leaving money on the table. There are tired men here with children, and they were like a cold beer. <laughs> we'll raise him for capital. The third time I said it, he said, don't tell me that again. And he said it very firmly. <laughs> and there were three other times I got help from <laughs> Could you talk about how uh, the numbers led you to the decision to be down here in the Orange County area as opposed to being closer to the studios? Because I understand the San Fernando Valley had well, when I, when I went out to, uh, the, on the first, after I got the study, I went and had a meeting with Walt, and I said, have you got a bias? And he said, absolutely not. Uh, it's wide open. What? You tell me. And I said, no bias, you know, no, no predetermined entrance. What about your golden oak that you own up north of the valley? Don't bother me with that, he said. I want your opinion of where this park will work the best. That was the, that was the clear instruction. And uh, basically the things we looked at to come at location were the, since you couldn't be in the center of LA and you were trying to service a resident market of uh, five counties, you had to move out. So we studied freeway systems to see which way you could move out. And there were three directions you could move out with reasonable completion times. Uh, then we looked at temperature gradients because it was 10 degrees hotter in the valley of San, San, San Fernando Valley and it was an equal amount hotter in uh, the Pomona Valley. So we gave attention to the fact that we didn't want to bake our people in the summertime <laughs> weather. And it's also colder in winter in those places. Um, then we looked at the direction of growth of the area. We played with census data until we were bilious with our old <laughs> Marchant computers. Uh, and we found that the, the center of the five counties was moving from around Alhambra, uh, Atlantic Boulevard, and, uh, and, and south of, uh, of Alhambra. It was moving southwest rapidly because of the growth of Orange County. Um, and so we gave credit to that. Uh, we looked at small patterns, and uh, we found we didn't want to be on the foothills, anywhere on the foothills, which was also a hotter area. Um, and then we finally zeroed in on an amoeba of uh, location between the Orange County border and the Santa Ana City and five miles either side of the San Diego Freeway. That was our amoeba, and then, and then we did detailed site location, came up with 10 sites in that area, and he took number one, so uh, Anaheim became the choice. Uh, if it hadn't been Anaheim, it would probably have been the Willowick Country Club in Santa Ana, which would not nearly have been as good. Did you have any dealings with him over the uh, property in uh, Florida? I sure did. We had at least a dozen studies on, on, on the initial startup in Florida. We did three site location studies. Uh, we also did an, a feasibility evaluation when he was trying to do a joint venture with, 
with uh, MacArthur, the insurance man, and RCA Victor, and NBC in North Palm Beach. Uh, MacArthur had 12,000 acres there. And it, it might have evolved because uh, Disneyland was tying in with RCA and NBC. And, uh, the, the, but RCA ran into cash flow problems and their chairman Burns uh, kind of said, no, not for me. And, and uh, Walt was busy in the New York Fair and said, well, let's look at it after the fair's over. When we looked at it again, we did a, a study that said the optimum location was not North Palm Beach. The optimum location was around, was around Orlando. And we did the amoeba thing <coughs> around Orlando and, and gave him a choice of four sites on the south side of Orlando. <coughs> I was wondering, based on the news and the rumors we've seen in the last few years, it seems that there's more interest in opening new theme parks and expanding theme parks overseas. Do you think that reflects the greater potential overseas or that there's no real potential anymore to, to expand or build theme parks in the United States? No, I think it reflects, uh, as a premise, as a theorem, that we have families which ignite the attraction of other people have families and have the same motivation to recreate as, as, as a unit. Uh, they had not done it. Uh, and Disneyland showed them how. And it took them a while. There was real resistance because they had been running their parks on the milkman mode. That's, uh, you know what the milkman mode is? You, you operate like mad for the, the season, and then you head for the, the beach in Spain, or the beach in somewhere. And, uh, and, and you don't reinvest because uh, you're using the money for your own goodwill. Um, Walt's Park showed that if you wanted to have a real product, you had to invest heavily, and you had to reinvest heavily and you had to build something that people wanted to see and had to be fresh. And Europe followed. Uh, and Asia followed in, uh, with a lag of, uh, what was it, 20 years? Something like that. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, inevitable that the success of Walt's revolution in the USA would find root abroad. Uh, outline for Walt for Orlando area? Yeah. How much of Walt Disney World took up that idea? How much what? How much of the Walt Disney World space we know now was inside of... All of them. That park is 27,362 <coughs> acres, I think. <laughs> uh, it was all inside that area, that I mean. So it was a very large amoeba compared It was, to you bet, the, the, the amoeba uh, here in, in, in Anaheim was 10 times 20, uh, 200 square miles. There was plenty of room to look for sites. And, and the, the amoeba down there was, it was probably a little bit, a little bit bigger, not a lot. The second question, uh, was talking about how it's so important to reinvest, which is something I believe we all believe in. Have you noticed that the Disney company might be more now. I notice what? That they're getting more reinvestment into their parks. Or well, have been constant all these years. Walt's theory was that he didn't want to wake up someday and find out that nobody was interested in his park. Uh, and uh, and his, his his instinct was, I will put something new in regularly, frequently, if not every year, every other year. There will always be a reason to come back. Um, that transmuted into something like uh, 12 to 25% of your Abdita uh, profit, your operating profit, uh, in a viable, uh, vigorous enterprise. Um, and we tracked that in all of the major parks. SeaWorld did it. 
Bush did it. Six Flags did it. They all uh, took a major portion of their available cash flow or a big debt uh, and reinvested on because they had all caught on to the fact that this is the attraction world is show business. You can't offer the same damn product year after year without it declining. So I mean that was Walt's first fundamental lesson on the vitality and and importance of reinvestment. And he was absolutely an original on that subject. Everybody else had been playing the milkman. What project did you uh, work with on Walt that didn't get completed that you wish may have been completed? Walt wanted, Walt wanted very much uh, to exercise a personal interest uh, and do what he'd done in the amusement park business. He took a tired old business and whipped it into shape by showing what could be done in the amusement park business. He also wanted to do that <coughs> in a field he was quite interested in, uh, which was the winter summer resort. The, matter, uh, the Matterhorn in, uh, in Switzerland was the, the one that cat fancied his imagination. He went there uh, two or three times and, and said, this is, a, this is the general idea. He hired Willie Scheffler, uh, who was a world-class uh, ski coach, ski athlete, Olympic hero, uh, the ultimate ski uh, hero. Uh, and he went looking for the perfect location to build uh, the ultimate ski resort that would be the model for the winter summer resort of the future. And he, we found the site and we were all set to go. Uh, it was Mineral King, halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles, two huge markets. Uh, in, a, in a, an unbelievable setting, we had $40 million from Pat Brown to improve the highway. Everything was ready to go and he died. If he hadn't died, I'm pretty sure it would have been fun. I would bet my last dollar. If he'd lived two more years, it would have been built. Um, and that was our biggest disappointment. Not just me, but Willie Scheffler, Bob Hicks, and the others who worked on it. We all knew that he was on to something. He could have made a resort of the likes of which there was no, no other place in the world, and he had the site for it. And it, they blew it. And that was a big disappointment. The reason they, they said they didn't want to do it in the corporation is that they had CalArts to build, they had Florida build to build, and Walt was dead, and how much can you do? And I understand that. But it happened, and it's a big disappointment. We three, three markets to enter in sequence. Uh, one was Tokyo, uh, two was France, and three was London. Uh, and we wrote that report, and since they did the first two, it more or less held the water. One more question. What do you do to keep your mind on the Well, I love numbers. Um, I've been around a lot of creative people. I found out early on that the design world flounders in pursuit of numbers. And, and that I found a niche I could be useful. <laughs> uh, because I could do numbers work better than the average architect. I could do numbers work better than damn near every architect I ever met. <laughs> uh, and they, Some I won them all. If you could, uh, you know. In the it. first place, they they said we can do that. Welton Beckett had uh, a, a five band econ division, and one day he fought, he called up and said, "Hey, I've had enough of this." He said, it's a conflict of interest when we do our own numbers. How would you like to have five people and all our work? <laughs> so I hired these five people. We got all our work. Still get all our work at the other. 